Last week, Zev, you helped us to understand the importance of the counting of the Omar and, and how it is important for the believers to do that. And even how Ruth, back in her time, was, was concerned about this counting of the Omar. And so we, we started that journey from unleavened bread and the Passover, going through the first fruits into this counting the Omar, looking forward to Pentecost, to Shavuot, and, and understanding that this whole promise of this one new man um, and that this was a foreshadow, the Omar of, it was a picture of a harvest leading to this one new man. And Zev, you spoke about a final harvest that was coming. And Zev, from what you left us with last week, this harvest is already beginning, this one new man in the land of Israel right now. Absolutely. There's a, an amazing harvest happening in Israel right now. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says, the veil is being lifted. That's what's happening right now in Israel. Jews are being saved like never before. Orthodox Jews, atheist Jews, rabbis. Just last week, I had a conversation with four rabbis. Now, they invited me to the conversation not to learn about the Bible, not to learn about Yeshua, but opposite. They wanted to deprogram me. They wanted to convince me that Yeshua is not the Messiah. Now, normally, I would not go to a meeting you know, in, in a basement with four rabbis unless God told me to. And I prayed, and the Holy Spirit told me to go. I had a group of believers in our ministry team praying on the outside. They didn't go in there with me. And I went underground. I, mean, I say underground because it's in a basement in Bnei Brak in an or the Orthodox city. And these four rabbis are sitting there. And when I walked in, they were really amazed because they thought that I'm going to come with about 10 people. You know, he's not going to come alone. But they were surprised that I was there alone and I wasn't afraid to meet them. You know, I always proclaim Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? And I'm sitting there, and these four rabbis are just pounding me. They're just telling me, Yeshua is not the Messiah. You can't preach this to the Jewish people anymore. And they're using all kinds of verses from the Talmud that's not even biblical. And I'm just letting them speak. I'm respecting them. I never, uh, I don't have to discredit the Talmud. The Bible can do it for me. God doesn't need my help. The Word of God says that it's sharper than a two-edged sword. So I just let them talk. And then when they're finished, I just ask them a very, very simple question. I say, if Yeshua is not the Messiah, then what are you scared of? Why did you call me over here to speak? What is disturbing you? He's not the Messiah, you say. You know, where they start getting really uh, nervous and upset. And then they, and a lot of these uh, rabbis uh, that are deep programmers, they actually read the New Testament, but they're not reading it in order to learn Bible. They're reading it in order to deprogram us, I would say. And he quotes the Bible verse and he says, you say Yeshua is the Messiah but when he was on the cross. He said, my God, my God, why are you forsaken me? He says, even Yeshua said that God forsook him. And then I turn the Bible to the book of Psalms 22, where it says, where King David is quoting under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Eli, Eli, lama zaftani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And first of all, they're in shock because they don't even know it's in the Old Testament. That's the first time they've ever seen it because they never read the Bible. They just read under rabbinic interpretations all the time. That's how the enemy gets the Jews out of the scripture by reading interpretations of the Bible and reading interpretations of interpretations of the Bible. The enemy knows the Bible. He knows that Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he can get the Jewish people out of the word of God, out of God's provision. He can try to block their revelation. People in the Western world may be surprised. The rabbis don't know these Bible verses. They don't really read the Bible. They're reading rabbinic interpretations of the Bible. I told them, this is in, in the Old Testament. King David is quoting it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. This is a prophecy prophesied before the cross, before Yeshua was crucified. And the only reason Yeshua said that was because God is holy and God cannot see sin. And for that moment, Yeshua felt that the Father was not with him. And he said, why have you, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Because he was bearing all the sins, your sins and my sins on him. If you accept and you believe and you repent. And those four rabbis, those four rabbis were in shock. They had nothing to say. And I just left the conversation. That was the end of it. A seed was planted. Many times we think that uh, we plant a seed and nothing happens. Something's going to happen. Those rabbis are going to have visions. They're going to have dreams. They're not going to be the same again. And this is where it's so important for the church, for the nations to continue to pray for Israel. Because there is a harvest. Look, the book of Joel, chapter 2, 28, speaks about this. It says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will have dreams. Your young men will see visions. I'm telling you, this is happening right now in the Middle East with the Jews, with the Muslims, with the Arabs. Those rabbis and other Orthodox Jews that have received the gospel in one way or another, it doesn't matter what their motivation was. They had an evil motivation. God is going to turn it in for a blessing. And this is what's happening in Israel on a daily basis. This is why they couldn't speak, because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Praise the Lord. And we have other, other uh, amazing testimonies, uh, Muslims coming to faith. You know, one of the biggest issues in the Middle East is the war between uh, the Jews and the Arabs. When the gospel of Yeshua is preached, that's when the Arabs listen, because they want to know how can it be that an Israeli, a Jew, loves us. And this is where the gospel is preached. And we're seeing salvations in the Muslim world, in the Arab world, in Israel. Souls are being saved. There's an end time harvest happening right now. The harvest is coming in. Well, hallelujah to that. Zev, I know that you're, I mean, trying to track you down, Zev. It seems like every time we try to make contact, well, you had a believer, someone call here, or a new salvation that happened, and you've got to run to it. Zev, it it seems to me like this is happening now all over in the land of Israel, that there is this sudden uh, just— actually just a fire going through of people that are wanting to know about the Messiah to where you're getting calls almost daily on this. We're getting a lot of calls because a lot of people in Israel, they're kind of reluctant to give you a phone number or give you even their email. But when you give your phone number or your contact information and you say, you can call me with a no caller ID. You don't have to tell me your name. They feel secure and they call you and they ask questions because there's a hunger. Once the gospel is preached, that person is not the same again. Even if he rejects, once he's heard the truth, it's hard to resist it. God is going to speak to that person. He's going to have dreams. This is why it's so important for the nations to continue to stand and pray for Israel, because your prayers are working. The gospel is going back to Jerusalem. That final harvest is coming in. No one knows when Yeshua has returned, but we do know the season. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. This is the season. This is the time. We're before Pentecost, before Shavuot, before the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let's continue to stand together to bring in that fire, to bring in that harvest, in prayer, in, in whatever you can do to support us to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem. Souls are being saved like never before. A lot of it has to do also with the revelation of Rabbi Yitzhak Aduri, the rabbi who left the note that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. A lot of Jews are reading that book. It's drawing them to the written word of God. The Holy Spirit's opening their eyes, and souls are being saved. This is happening on a daily basis. What you see on the Internet, what you read on the Internet, is not even 5% of what's really happening in Israel. Because you need to understand, uh, uh, Frank, not everyone wants their picture on the Internet. Not everyone wants to be filmed in a video. But the ones that are, we praise God for that, because it's encouraging the believers around the world to know that the seeds are being planted that the harvest is coming in. Zev, there seems like to me that I know it's it's still, there's persecution. When you stand up for Yeshua, when you come out, as you were talking about earlier, those rabbis, there are people that will actively uh, come out against you, that will yell at you, they will shun you. Um, the same pressures that we can see even back during the days uh, of Yeshua, when Nicodemus came by night, you know, there was, there's a, there's a, a you know, a, basically a, a persecution that happens. And but Zev, are you seeing more boldness in this hour of people that are that were maybe shy before? Does it seem like there's more and more people that are now willing to go out publicly? Well, first of all, we need to understand we're in the end times, and sin is exhalating to a new level. And when sin exhalates to a new level, so does the gospel, because everything is tolerant today. People are tolerant of gay marriages, they're tolerant of tattoos, they're tolerant of people drinking in pubs and partying and having and taking drugs, and are also being tolerant of Messianic Jews preaching the gospel. It's happening right now. So people are listening because everything is acceptable. So yes, it's it's getting easier to preach the gospel. It's still difficult. We get a lot of persecution, yes, but blessed are those who are persecuted for Yeshua's name. Uh, three months ago in Jerusalem, I can share this testimony, we were sharing the gospel in the Kotel, in the Western Wall area, and an Orthodox man overheard the conversation he came over to me and he just slapped me right in the face frank really hard and my first reaction was i just turned around to him and i said you can do that again if you'd like if that would cause you to believe in yeshua the messiah then go ahead and slap me again 
And he was, he just left. And it was a testimony because the people that were there, they saw this and they said, we want to hear about this Yeshua. If you're willing to take a slap for him, we want to hear about it. And I had four hours of Bible study right there in the Kotel. This is a perfect example of how God takes persecution and turns it into a blessing. God bless you for that. I'll tell you, that is a, a powerful thing because a lot of us, uh, if someone slaps me in the face, you know, the first thing that wants to rise up many times is the old me. And that's the last thing I want to happen. And and hallelujah that God was able to use a moment like that. Folks, you don't know the situation that you're in when someone's coming against you, when they're persecuting you, when they even slap you in the face and, and we want to retaliate. But it's when we hold back that retaliation and we respond with peace that Look what happened, Zev. I mean, God used that to open up a door, and now more people want to to know about the gospel. And, and you mentioned about the tolerant, uh, the things that are going on. And I think what a lot of uh, people don't understand is a lot of the things we're facing over here. Well, you mentioned gay marriage, uh, tolerance, um, you know, things being that we used to call sin, uh, not being called sin anymore. You all are dealing with those exact same problems as we are here in the U.S. Absolutely. People think about Israel as being in the Holy Land, and it is, because it's uh, Yeshua said, I'll write my name uh, in Jerusalem, right? And uh, when uh, Pharisees confronted Yeshua and he said, can you keep your students quiet, your disciples quiet? And he said, even if I did, the very walls would cry out my name. So that's what he was talking about. But actually, Israel right now, if you talk about Tel Aviv and those areas of Israel, it's very secular, very worldly. And yes, sin is tolerant over here, unfortunately. But again, the gospel is going out. So we think about Israel, we don't think that they'll accept gay marriage and anything. And I'm not saying that the government has accepted it. I'm saying that the residents, the people in the culture have accepted it. And that's pretty bad. But once again, it's a sign of the end times. So, Zev, what is the actual percentage of actual Orthodox Jews over there versus secular? Uh, the numbers are not so clear, but we're, we're over 400,000 Orthodox Jews, really Orthodox Jews, which is not, not that big of a percentage because we got 8 million people in Israel with the Arabs, 8 million point two hundred. Take 400,000 Orthodox Jews, that's not a very high percentage. But... The Orthodox Jews, here's what they say. They say that the reason the Messiah has not come is because the Jews need to become Orthodox. Mm. That's what they say. And uh, that also opens an opportunity to share the gospel because it's backfiring on them. Because the secular Jews or the average traditional Jew in Israel, he doesn't want to be in bondage and be an Orthodox Jew. So they're against that statement. And that also opens the gospel. So once again, everything that the Orthodox Jews are doing is backfiring on them, and the gospel's getting out. Well, that that's a, amazing. And so, Zev, what we see is you're actually dealing with some of the problems that we deal with here, and it's not only just as we so commonly think in the U.S., well, he's just dealing with, you know, rabbis and Orthodox. You're dealing with atheists, non-believers, uh, you know, people that would believe just, you know, in the whole entire socialistic, communistic, whatever, the same problems we deal with here, you deal with over there when trying to reach believers. It's not only Orthodox, it's the complete unbeliever that you are now reaching. The atheists also are coming to know Yeshua. Am I right on that? Absolutely. We were sharing uh, the gospel in the city of Ashdod in Israel, and an atheist uh, man spoke to us, and he said, look, I really don't believe in God, and, uh, you know, I, I don't care that you believe in Jesus. For me, uh, there's no God at all, and uh, you can believe whatever you want. He was very open to speak about it and very prideful that he doesn't believe in God. And I just turned around, and we were at the seashore in Ashdod, and I, the sun was going down, and I looked at the sun, and I just said, isn't that beautiful? And he turned around, he looked at the beach, he looked at the sun, and he said, yeah. I said, what do you think? You think something created that? And he was puzzled, and he looked at me, and he says, yeah, maybe. And I said, well, maybe there's a God. What do you think? And then he really started to think. And before you knew it, this guy who didn't want to believe in God or said that there's no God was reading the Bible. And in this case, he was reading the New Testament, which is quite unusual. Jews don't read the New Testament. But because he didn't believe in God at all, it was easy to take him direct to the New Testament. And for me, there is no New Testament and Old Testament. And the reason is because when Yeshua 
was quoting in his three and a half year ministry, what was he quoting from? There was no New Testament. He was quoting everything from the Old Testament because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of the New. It's all connected. It's one book. But in the Jewish mind, it's the New Testament is not for them. But he was reading the New Testament before you knew it. After two hours, this man who didn't believe in God gave his life to Yeshua HaMashiach. That is incredible. Amen. And all we did was use creation through the Holy Spirit. Well, the Bible says that creation itself is a witness, and so I first thank God and praise his name for that. What a blessing. You know, Zev, there is a large messian a larger messianic community that's beginning to grow over there. Um what is it like in the churches over there um in the messianic communities? Do is is this feeling that you um you know, this missionary spirit is is it kind of sweeping through the messianic congregations where they're becoming uh, you know, a unified effort? I mean, I know they have diversity just like we have diversity in churches there, but are the messianic communities seeing this harvest like you're seeing? Are they working actively with you in this? I can't speak for uh, other congregations. I can speak for my congregation. In my congregation, we're actively preaching the gospel in the streets of Israel. Unfortunately, we need to pray that other congregations will do the same. A lot of people are doing a lot of media, a lot of other things, but the gospel is not being preached enough in Israel out of fear of persecution, out of fear of a family, of people, of friends. But we pray that more and more people will join us. We have a lot of people in our ministry joining us right now. The gospel is getting out. So I can only speak about my ministry and let you know that uh, my congregation, my Messianic congregation, and my ministry, uh, we promote preaching the gospel because Yeshua said, go and make disciples of all nations. And that's exactly what we do. The gospel must be preached. Even we reach the Holocaust survivors, we reach the idea of soldiers. Yeshua said, man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. If we reach people with food vouchers or with Bibles or with love and we don't preach the gospel, then it's not real love. The gospel must be preached first. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and everything will be added to you. The kingdom of heaven has to be preached in every circumstance first. And that's what we do regardless of what. Look, if it takes to be punched in the face or be spit on or be mocked or be slandered, then so be it. We will not stop preaching the good news of Yeshua HaMashiach until Kol Yisraeli Vashai, until all Israel shall be saved. Romans eleven twenty six. Who is all Israel? All Israel is the one new man. That's all Israel. It consists of physical Jews and physical nations coming into the olive tree as the one new man in the new Jerusalem. Wow. Spiritually Israel. Hallelujah for that. You know, Zev, we've got people here in America, and, and for many years, this nation, the uh, United States, was known as the nation that sent the missionaries unto the world. That's what we did. But we've had a, a change here where things have kind of slowed down, and actually they're finding out that their countries are now sending missionaries to the United States uh, to reach back to us. And, and But there are people that are feeling like um, they want to do something. And, and Zev, I know that you, in your own strength, to step out into Orthodox uh, places in Israel, uh, you know, that is a definite fail that's going to happen. But yet we see God uh, using it. Zev, how could you encourage the believers that they too um, can prepare and, and to seek God and they too can win souls just like what's going on over there? What would you say to the believers here in the U.S.? Well, first of all, nothing is done by my strength. Everything is through Yeshua HaMashiach. I can't do anything alone. It's all the Holy Spirit. It's all that God has given me the power and the might to do this, and I praise His name for that. If it was up to me, I wouldn't be able to do anything. It all comes down to this, uh, Frank. We've been talking about the Feast of the Lord. We've been, we've been talking about the final harvest. We have to abide in His Word. We have to abide in His Holy Spirit and His power. And only then can He enable us to do these amazing things. Because preaching the gospel, you know, it's not from this world. It's supernatural. Yeshua said we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We cannot preach the gospel if we're walking in the world. We have to walk in the supernatural. And if we walk in the supernatural, the gospel can be preached. If we walk in the supernatural, God will enable us to speak. Moses says, I don't know how to speak. He stuttered. God enabled him to speak. At what age? At age 80. Moses was 40 years a prince. He spent 40 years in the desert. And only in the last 40 years did God use him to redeem the people of Israel from Egypt, which represents the world. So God doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what your education is. It doesn't matter how much Bible you know. 
If you're in the word, in Yeshua HaMashiach, if you have that relationship with him, and that's where it all begins. Bringing in the harvest has to do with the relationship. You can't say, I want to bring in the harvest, but I have no relationship. I want to bring in the harvest my way. It's got to be done God's way. And there's a promise in the Bible. If you do it God's way, then God will bless you and God will enable you to bless others. And what's blessing others? It's the gospel of Yeshua HaMashiach. And God can use anybody at any age. Hallelujah for that. Folks, you, you got to remember th what Brother Zev said is so true. We got to do it God's way. You know, I mentioned the other week on one of the programs is that sometimes some of the hardest things in life is when we realize that what we've been taught is not according to the scripture. And so we sometimes we get introduced to this new truth, to understanding the truth in God's word, and it's tough. But if we do it his way, if we seek him the way he asked us to seek him, you know, in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 58, he says, if you'll fast the way that I want you to fast, God says he'll break every yoke. It's a, one of the most amazing promises in the word of God. And he's just saying, just do it the way I said to do it, and I will bless you for it. And Zev, I think that's what you've been trying to share with us is that about the understanding these feasts and, the, and God's appointed times and, and the importance, especially of counting the Omer, of actually examining ourselves. Zev, you have to examine yourself before you go step into a meeting with four Orthodox rabbis or you're toast. If I don't have a relationship with God and I don't hear from the Holy Spirit, I am toast. You're right. You know, I think about the Apostle Paul. I think about Rav Shaul, uh, Rabbi Shaul. You know, he was one of the greatest preachers, the greatest evangelist I, I ever knew. He went through everything. He went through. He was in prison. He was scourged. He was beaten for the gospel. I don't think anybody went through what Paul went through, but the Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 5 and 6, it says that, and, and so the church is established in faith, increased in number daily. So we know that when Paul preached, there was a revival. The churches were growing, the believers were growing in numbers daily. That's what it says in Acts 16, 5. But yet in Acts 16, 6, we read that they were forbidden to preach in Asia. In Asia, is, uh, is uh, Turkey Minor, okay, over here. They were forbidden by the Holy Ghost. Now, if God sends you to do something and you're persecuted, then God will protect you. But if God didn't send you to do something and you're persecuted, then God will not protect you because you didn't go in by God's will. And I think in Acts 16, verse 16, maybe you can read that Bible verse for us, uh, uh, Brother Frank. Sure. Acts 16, 16. Being in verse 5. And so were the churches established in faith and increased in number daily. Now, when they had gone through Phygria and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. So here we have a perfect example, Brother Frank, that Paul was preaching the gospel with Silas and they were they were having a, a revival. They were doing exactly what God wanted to do. And although they were having revival, they were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach in Asia, which is Turkey Minor. We don't know. Maybe it was not God's time. Maybe God was protecting them. But one thing is certain. If they would have gone into Asia without God's blessing, they might have been killed. It's very important to realize that if God opens the door for us, no one can shut it. Now, later on, they were allowed to preach, but they had to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. So, And how can you be obedient to the Holy Spirit if you're not in his word, if you're not in his timing? So first of all, we have to seek first the kingdom of heaven, and then God will enable us through the Holy Spirit to be preachers of the word wherever God has positioned us to be. And if we're persecuted, we, we need not worry. If God is for us, who can be against us? God will protect us. Just like he protected me when that big Orthodox man, he was about six foot five, six foot six. He came over and he slapped me in the wailing wall. I was protected by the Holy Spirit, and God opened the door for the gospel to be preached. Zev, the Lord is working right now in Israel. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, we are already coming to the end of this program again. And thank you, Zev, for just sharing for a moment some of these exciting uh, testimonies of, of how Yeshua how, is working in the power of the Spirit in this great end time harvest. It's already happening now in Israel, and we can see that it's growing. And folks, I'll tell you what, when everything goes down, when, when it all hits the fan, you might be surprised just 
how fast this gospel shoots like lightning across this world into the darkest places that you never thought it would get to? Well, you'd be surprised when everything goes berserk, how quickly God will finish this work. And we need to be ready now so that we can move when he says to move. And Zev, you are already moving. So Zev, if someone wants to get involved, wants to, you, you mentioned earlier, and if you could give your website again so people can get involved with what's going on right now over in Israel. Our website is messiahofisraelministries.org and zevporatministries.com. We also have Facebook pages. We have YouTube channels. You can Google our name also, uh, Messiah of Israel Ministries, or Google my name, Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat, and all the information will pop up. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to pray together, sign up to get our newsletters, updates from Israel, videos from Israel, find out what's going on, and let's bring in that last harvest and go home. That's what it's all about. Look, the Bible says in Isaiah 62, verse 5, that God is going to rejoice over his bride. He's going to rejoice over us. And that's what it's all about. God wants to rejoice over his bride. Isaiah 62, verse 5. Let's bring in that harvest, but let's make sure that more people are going to be rejoicing with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Folks, this is the hour that the Word of God spoke about. This is the time that we heard about as children. For those of us who were raised in the faith, our grandparents talked about this is the day. You know, it's interesting that, you know, a hundred years ago when people were looking, Zev, at the interpretation of the Bible and in the late 1800s, they could only see the nation of Israel coming back together as a spiritual event. And in here, God ended up doing it literally just like like his word said. And folks, when God says it, he means it. And I'm telling you what, the Bible is going to shock a lot of people when we see these things come to pass. Oh, it's time to be about the Father's business. And so folks, I would just like to say thank you for joining in. Zev, thank you for everything you're doing. And may the Father just bless you in this continued work over there, you know, to be able to take that slap in the face and to be able to respond back with love is a powerful thing in May the Lord just continue to expand your ministry all over Israel until, as you said earlier, all Israel, all the Jews and Gentiles together. We wrap this up in this final time right before the return of Yeshua and so that God can come and we will be with our Heavenly Father and our Savior forever. And we just thank you. And with that, this is Brother Frank and Brother Zev Parat from the Remnant Call saying good night and shalom.